Hello friends, welcome to the Dishing Out Season 3 Finale. It's hard to believe it's been a year since we last gathered around this lovely tree to celebrate the holidays. And in that year, we've cooked a lot of delicious food and had a few more of you join our ranks. We've made new friends and introduced you to some of ours. It's been a lot of fun and we're glad that you've joined us for it. It's been a fun year sharing our dishes with you, 35 in total that we've made, and so we thought it might be a fun idea to count down our top five as decided by me, the only person who actually ate every single one of them. So without further ado, number five. Episode 3.14, the California burrito with roasted salsa. The carne asada marinade would make a gym sock taste good. The salsa is versatile, the guac, well, it's guac, what more needs to be said. French fries and cheese put this degenerate in the best way possible burrito over the top. Number four, episode 3.7, gumbo. It's not the fastest dish to make, but your labors are rewarded with a rich, spicy stew of succulent meats and aromatic veggies. Adjust the heat and seasoning to your taste, of course. It makes enough for a crowd or leftovers, which, by the way, are even better on day two. Number three, episode 2.6, Pork medallions with mushroom cream sauce. A fraction of the cost of beef tenderloin, pork tenderloin is every bit the moist, delectable bite as its beefier brother. This pan sauce is so decadent it makes the dish feel like fancy bistro fare at a fraction of the cost or effort. Number two, episode 3.2, General Tso's chicken and fried rice. Okay, on paper, this is probably one of the less approachable dishes we've put out, at least ingredient wise, but should you make it, and you should, you'll be rewarded with the tastiest so of your life. A dish which calls to mind the takeout tastes in the same way that meeting the one will make you think of all the mistakes you've dated in the past. It's that good. And alternatively, the fried rice is super simple and makes a great side dish to any stir fry. Before we reveal number one, let's give this week's dish a shot because it sounds like, at least on paper, a contender. We'll be making a roasted rack of lamb that's crusted in a panko and herb crust roasted rainbow carrots, garlic mashed potatoes, and a mint chimichurri that ties everything together. It's a dish fit to serve your sweetheart, your family, or heads of state. Let's get to it. The first thing we'll do is make our mint chimichurri. Now all the exact ingredients and directions will be on dishingouteats.com. I'm going to start off with a, a couple tablespoons of chopped parsley as well as about a tablespoon of chopped mint and slice up one red hot chili pepper. You can certainly leave this out or at least leave the seeds out if you want to make it less spicy. Go ahead and add that to a bowl to which we are going to add a couple of cloves of finely minced garlic. Once that's done, we're going to add the zest of about half a lemon and the juice of about half a lemon as well more or less about a tablespoon. Go in with about a quarter cup of extra virgin olive oil. Of course, season with pepper and a pinch of salt. And finally, about a tablespoon of red wine vinegar. Stir that around, taste and adjust to your taste as desired. Go ahead and set that aside and let's talk about our lamb. I've got about a one and a half pound rack here. This would feed three to four people, depending on their appetites. And even though it's already been Frenched and a lot of the fat has been removed from the bones, I want to go ahead and take a little bit more off so that you're not biting any, any large pieces of fat. So once that's done, we will season with some salt and pepper as always. And make sure you do this on a big plate so that once you're done, you can kind of mop up all that extra seasoning. Make sure you get all sides and the ends. Now, set that into the fridge and we need to roast some garlic. Showed you how to do this last week. So let's just do that again. Take the top off, salt, pepper, olive oil into a 400 degree oven for 35 to 45 minutes. As long as we're gonna go ahead and turn the oven on, we may as well get our carrots cooking. We've got some beautiful baby rainbow carrots here, which I'm going to take the tips and tails off of. Go ahead and rinse them. I'm not peeling them because I like it kind of rustic, but you certainly could if you wanted to. Anything that's uh, real large, I'm going to go ahead and cut that in half and put it cut side down on my baking tray. Season them with salt and pepper and olive oil and then a little bit of honey. Carrots are naturally sweet, but this honey is really going to help them caramelize on the pan. Give them a shake and into that same 400 degree oven for about the same 35 to 45 minutes. Now, onto our mashed potatoes. 
I've got some russets here, which I'm going to peel because I want to have a very nice, smooth mashed potato texture. And then go ahead and cut those in half and into quarters. And once that's done, just into one to two inch pieces so that they cook evenly. Once you've got your potatoes all cut up, get those into a pot of cold water and put it on high heat. Season very generously with salt and boil for 10 to 15 minutes. You'll know the potatoes are done when they are fork tender. While our potatoes are cooking, let's turn our attention to the other ingredients for our mashed potatoes. That being one stick, yes one stick, I didn't say it was healthy, but I did say it was good, into a saucepan over medium heat. Melt that along with one cup of half and half. You could use whole milk or all heavy cream if you want. With the potatoes tender, we will drain them off into our sink. And then one little load at a time, we're gonna put them into what's called a potato ricer. You could use a regular masher for this, but this is how to get the most fluffy, creamy mashed potatoes you've ever had in your life. Squeeze them through the ricer into the same pot that you cook them in to drive off any residual moisture. And sure, I could have put the garlic in the ricer, but I wasn't thinking very clearly. So add in your roasted garlic and about half of your butter and cream mixture. Mix, add the rest and check the consistency. You can always add more liquid, but it's kind of hard to take it out if you add too much. Season generously with salt and pepper, and then for an extra bit of tang, I add in a couple of tablespoons of full fat sour cream. Stir and set to the side with a lid. Those will stay warm for quite some time. Now let's make our herb crust. A couple of cloves of garlic, a couple handfuls of uh, basil go down into a food processor, a couple tablespoons of grated Parmigiano Reggiano cheese, and about half a cup of panko breadcrumbs. Definitely want to use panko for this. They stay crispy uh, even when they're broken down in the food processor. Season that up with some salt and pepper and then give it a blitz until everything is incorporated and you've got a vibrant green crumb crust. To cook our lamb, get a skillet ripping hot, add in a couple tablespoons of oil and sear the meat on all sides for just a couple of minutes. It's not actually gonna be cooked through at this point, but we wanna get that sear in order to get that deep delicious flavor. Now, once you've got all of your sides seared, put that into the oven at 400 degrees until it is cooked through to about 100 to 110 degrees. It won't quite be done yet, but what you're gonna do is take it out, baste it with some Dijon mustard, and then very generously roll it around in your herb breadcrumb mixture. You want lamb to be rare to medium rare, so we're shooting for around 125 to 130 internal on this. So again, this is gonna depend on the size of your roast, how long this cooks. You just need to check it with an instant read thermometer. Our carrots are done, beautifully caramelized. Those are ready to plate up. And there is our roast. After about five to six more minutes, that crumb crust gets nice and golden brown. So to plate, put down a nice amount of your mashed potatoes, a few carrots for color, a couple of slices of your perfectly cooked rack of lamb, a little bit of extra green on there, and you're ready to serve. I actually started eating before I filmed this. I couldn't help myself. I'm gonna pretend like it's the first time I've tried it, though, just for you. Oh man, that lamb is so tender, it's succulent. It's, it does have a rich, meaty flavor, but the bright acidity and all the herbs, the basil, the mint from the chimichurri, the parsley, garlic. Those potatoes are absurdly creamy. All that butter, half and half, and yeah. Well, it's worth it. It's a holiday meal, right? So I hope you'll enjoy it. Let me send it over to myself to send you off into the holidays the right way. Thanks for watching. Thanks, Chris. That's weird. Anyways, let's get to it. Number one, which dish would we make again and again? Which dish did many of you reach out to us and say, I'm making this weekly, I'm making this monthly. Which dish would be the legacy of this channel if we, quite frankly, never put out any more content? Episode 2.1, the Margarita Cast Iron Pizza. Crisp crust, quick cook time, endless versatility. It's the perfect dish for any occasion. If you haven't made it yet, what are you waiting for? Speaking of waiting, you'll have to do a little bit of that before we see each other again.
this is it for dishing out season three and next time you see me it'll be 2021 so from me anubis and everyone else here at dishing out eats we want to say thanks for watching this season we wish you happy holidays merry christmas and a happy new year make sure to come back for season four which by the way will be in about five or six weeks and make sure you're subscribed so that you'll be the first to find out when it's coming so I guess with that being said, you've got some work to do, right? Yeah. Go make something delicious.